What is going on guys? Welcome to the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what data structures actually are and why they're important and also why they're interconnected with algorithms. So let us get right into it. So let us talk about the first question, which is what is a data structure? And a data structure is essentially just a way or a format for accessing, storing, managing, organizing, or as the name suggests, structuring data or information. For example, from programming, you already know what an array is. An array is just a collection that has a fixed size. For example, here we have an array of size six and it equals six. And this array has uh, certain elements, for example, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And this array, the array is a data structure. So the array, okay, ugly A again, array data structure. Now this data structure has certain advantages and disadvantages. For example, an advantage is that I can access each element without going through all the other elements. So what I can do in order to access uh, this element here is I just say, I want to access index uh, four, I think it is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. I just say I want to access index four and I can access E without a problem. I don't need to go through A, B, C, D to reach E. I can just go ahead and say, I want index four and I get it directly. Uh, this is called, I can access E in constant time. We're going to talk about runtime complexity in a future episode, as I already said but this would be an example of constant time. I just say I want to get to index four and I get to index four. It's not, not hard. I don't have to iterate over uh, all the elements that come before E. Uh, a disadvantage here would be that I would, uh, I'm not able to just go ahead and, uh, and uh, append a new element and increase the size of the list. I'm not just able to say, okay, let's change N to seven here and uh, let's increase the size of the array. It's not possible with an ordinary array uh, I cannot just say, okay, I have a new index here and let me enter a G here. This is not possible with an ordinary array. And this is the reason why we have different data structures. Depending on what you need, on what you prefer, you have to choose a certain data structure that fits your goals. And in this video, I'm not going to talk too much about the different data structures. We're not going to explain the different data structures because the data structures will be explained in detail in separate videos but I'm going to introduce to you today the concept of a linked list, just so you see, uh, roughly speaking, we're going to talk about linked lists in detail um, as well, but today I'm going to just give you a rough explanation of what a linked list is so that you can see why we use different data structures. And what a linked list essentially is, it's just a list that's uh, composed of nodes and the nodes have values. For example, uh, this could be A, and each node has a pointer to the next node. So again, I'm not going to explain in too much detail, just roughly speaking, you have a value and a pointer to a next value or to a next node that again contains a value and points to a next node. And this contains a value points to a next node. So having that structure allows you, of course, uh, and the last element points just to nothing to null, so to say. So this structure allows you a dynamic uh, to have a dynamic size. So what you do here in order to add a new element is you just say, okay, remove this null pointer here and just let it point to another node. You just have to create another node and this node then points to null, of course. Um, I think the camera is maybe blocking the view here. Um, A, B, C, D, E, and then to null. It's very easy to just remove elements or uh, insert new elements. It's not a, a, a static size here. You can just go ahead and add new elements. You don't have to add them in the end. You can also go ahead and just say, okay, um, I wanna have a Z here and this Z points to A. It's not a problem. You can also just go ahead and enter a new element, uh, I don't know, X here and let B point to X and X point to C, whatever you wanna do. And then of course you have to remove uh, you have to remove this connection here. And essentially, this is what you can do with a linked list. So you have the benefit of a dynamic sizing. However, if you want to access the element C, for example, it's not that easy. You cannot just go ahead and say, I want to access this element here with index uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not just as simple as it is with an array. Uh, and that's the disadvantage of a linked list because what you would have to do here is you would have to go, if you want to in access index four, what you do is you start here and you count, okay, this is index zero, then go one step further. This is index one, go one step further. This is index two, three, and four. Now we're here. So in order to access 
index number four, you have to go through zero, one, two, and three in order to access four. This is the, diff, uh, the, the disadvantage of a linked list. Again, the focus here is not on linked lists or arrays. The focus is on understanding why we need different data structures, why it's not enough to just have the same data structure over and over again. For example, if you want to search, if you want to have an efficient ser uh, search, you want to have a binary search tree, for example. You have different data structures for different purposes. Now you might be asking, where is the interconnection between algorithms and data structures? Why are these topics always taught together? Why are they not taught separately? Why do we not have a tutorial series on algorithms and then one on data structures separately? Why are they interconnected? And the answer is because you need both of those uh, in both ways. So data structures need algorithms and algorithms use data structures. It's just they are deeply interconnected. So for example, let's take the example of a linked list. Whatever you do with a linked list, you have some values here, A points to B and B points to C and so on. Whatever you wanna do here, um, this demands algorithms. So if you wanna find an element, if you wanna access an element, if you wanna add an element, these operations are not just adding. It's not just adding a new element, inserting a new element. Behind the inserting a new element, there is a set of instructions, an algorithm essentially. So if I decide that I want to create a new, um, a new node here, X, and I want to add it right in here, what do I do? I first of all delete the connection from B to C. I let B point to X and I let X point to C. Again, don't get too uh, confused about linked lists. We're not teaching linked lists yet. I'm just showing you that uh, algorithms are necessary here because inserting a new element into a linked list needs a set of instructions that is different from a set of instructions that is needed for a binary tree or in or an array so it's a very different thing adding a list uh, adding an element to a linked list than adding an element to an array and it's the same for finding an element in a linked list as we already talked uh, talked about it you need to go through all the nodes until you reach a node so the algorithm is next count up next increase the counter next increase the counter and so on whereas in array in an array you just go ahead and say uh, access this memory location so it's a different runtime complexity it's a different efficiency uh, accessing an element or adding an element, removing an element from an array than it is from a binary tree than it is from, from a linked list. Uh, this is this way, so data structures need algorithms, but algorithms also need data structures. If you want to solve a problem, um, you will need to make use of data structures. And depending on the problem, you're going to need different data structures. Sometimes you might have a queue of items that need to be processed by an algorithm, so you might use a stack. Again, if you don't know what a stack is, don't get confused. We're not talking about the data structures yet. But the stack is essentially, you know, you add items, you get items in a, in a queue sort of way, in a queue-like way. So you just um, push some items onto the stack, then you pop them out of the stack, and then you process them. And if you have a certain algorithm that needs to do, uh, to process elements in, in that way, in a, in a so-called uh, last in, first out, or a first in, first out, uh, kind of way, you're going to use a stack as a data structure to help, as a data structure that your algorithm uses to solve a problem. So algorithms need to make use of data structures and data structures, all the operations inside of data structures are based on algorithm, on a set of instructions. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a pretty short episode just explaining the interconnection between algorithms and data structures because a lot of people are confused in the beginning why these two topics are taught together. Now you should know it. Now you should have an intuition as to why this is the case. Um, again, if you like this video, if you learned something, hit the like button, leave some comments in the comment section down below and subscribe to this channel for more future content for free. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.